what's up legends long time no see if you consider like two weeks two and a half weeks three weeks to be a long time um i'm super excited to be back in front of you guys um with another message i had to take like a two-week hiatus just to get my life get my life get my life and um one thing that that i am super excited to bring back to you guys um of course the messages but i i'm excited to be back in front of you guys um feeling more balanced um with a greater sense of control as much control um as we can have here on earth um but i wanted to kind of just like debrief uh, a way in which we can gain greater control over our um, experiences, um, our experiences of the circumstances that we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you are having a super, super good day or a like not so good day, or say you are experiencing a lot of challenges. I really want to get out of using like good and bad because those words are so um, subjective. The word semantics is coming up in my head. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but um, I'm gonna look that up and I'm definitely going to um, edit that into the video. I'm feeling like it has something to do with the perspective of the way that you that you look at something, um, the semantics of a thing. Um, but I know when we have these like super, super um, good days or these really long periods of just like pure bliss and you know it's just like wow like not too many things can go wrong because as soon as something is perceivably wrong then you have 50,000 other very good things that happen and it almost distracts you from the things that you were perceiving to be as bad or wrong right so um I feel like a lot of times though when we are by ourselves and we don't have as many um, feasible distractions in front of us like social media um, or like you know a group of friends or you know just the things that we typically use in order to distract us from what is going on in our minds. Um, when we don't have those things or when those things are not working, what do we go to in order to feel peace? What do we grapple, what do we grasp onto in order to, um, to feel in control of what's going on in our minds, right? Um, and I think that can be, that, that just can be really difficult for anybody um, because we're not used to that. We live in a society where everything is like, go, 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 go. If you sit and still, you're fucking lazy. You know, like we don't live in a society where it's okay to be still, especially because once we sit still, that's when we start to feel like bombarded, right? So first of all, I want to talk about meditation because over these past two weeks i learned a very um a very like transformational lesson about meditation so you know when we usually think about meditation it can be like you know <laughs> or you know like we talk about how sometimes scripting is meditating or you know journaling i want to just point out the fact that meditation is any time that is set aside intentionally to focus on one thing that is meditation any time that is set aside intentionally to focus on one thing that is meditation um And during our meditations, um, it is important to note that everything that comes up is not you. So I know a lot of times we feel like, um, you know, like, I don't want to deal with all of these thoughts. Why am I having all these thoughts? You know, like, what's wrong with my brain? Am I sick? Am I da da da? The thoughts are not you. The thoughts um, are cycling what has been given to you 
over your lifespan. I was going to say over a period of time, but really over your entire lifespan. Um, I was listening to um, a martial artist on YouTube. His name is Grandmaster Wolf. And he made a very good point talking about how we are not the thoughts. We are not our thoughts. And he talked about how the ego, right, which is made up of all of these different thoughts and perspectives and opinions that other people have um, instilled within us, the ego is pretty much like already pretty like set and thinking it knows who it is, right, or it knows who you are by the time you're five years old because you grew up um especially during the times where you grew up without speech because you were just consuming 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 um without even really being able to comprehend everything that you were consuming until you were able to repeat it and then some people were like no that's bad or yeah i keep doing that so all of these things um then become instilled as thoughts and then eventually we become um we become accustomed to them to the point to where we think that all of our thoughts are us when that is absolutely not true. Um, you are the energy or the being that is observing all of these thoughts. Um, some of the thoughts are coming from you, like the multi dimensions of you that can be coming from um, your higher self, they can be coming from your shadow, they can be coming from straight from your ego, they can be coming from your inner child, they can be coming from your inner teen. These are different dimensions of you. They can also be coming from other spirits or other entities, they can be coming directly from your spirit team. In that case, we would call that a channel or a downloaded message, right? Um, or even like through a vision or having a smell, all different ways of channeling, right? using the clears um other times there are thoughts that are just repeated cycles um of things that you have heard from other people that you don't want to identify with but the reason why it's still cycling your mind and repeating is because a part of you is still identifying with that verbiage um or maybe with the feeling that came from the verbiage. I hope that this is making sense because I know that this is a lot. I just, right off the gate, we just hitting it straight. But I feel like that is very much needed. Um, you know, a lot of times we're like, you know, I don't understand why I just can't get this out of my head or why I just can't move past this thing. And it might be because of how familiar it is to you. So all in all, um, when we are meditating i want to just like really let you guys know that it is okay to really sit and observe all of these thoughts it's actually like very important to observe all of these thoughts but with no judgment right so instead of thinking like oh i cast this out or oh i don't want to think about this or oh i hated that or you know think about how it has served you how has it served you because without all of these different um things without all of these different thoughts without all of these different aspects of you and pieces of you that you had to um experience and then let go of right death and rebirth all of these different things that you had to grapple with throughout life whether it was um challenging through other people showing you a mirror of yourself um, or whether it was just completely blissful and completely just just like exhilarating and showing people showing you the best parts of yourself or you getting to experience the best parts of yourself or even parts of yourself that you didn't know existed. All of these things really deserve not only a seat at the table, but they deserve love. And I think that that was the biggest lesson um, that I learned over these, oh, really over the past month. Um, you know, we talk about karmic this, karmic that, da, 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 ba, ba, ba. but <laughs> to be completely honest, do we ever lose our karmic nature? No, because if we were to, look, that's confirmation, this four birds just flew past. If we were to lose, completely lose or be out of touch with our karmic nature, we would be completely out of touch with our human nature because 
our karmic nature is our more primal survivalist like animalistic um it you know side it te it helps us to protect our bodies protect our minds protect our spirits but it has to know its place you know what i'm saying everything has to know its place you are the master the chief the commander i love um what is it called in Ooh, Invictus. Yes, Invictus. I am the master of my fate and I'm the captain of my soul. So although all of these thoughts and all of these dimensions are a part of you, they are not you. But it, at the same time, it is important to cater to all of these different pieces of you because it's almost like having children, right? Like if you have, if you have 12 children, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a couple of them where you're just like, oh, these is my angel kids. Like, I love them so much. They almost perfect. Like, sometimes the few bad apples going to come over to my good kids and ruin the bunch and they might try to riot. But even the few bad apples or, you know, like the kids that you have to work with a little bit more, you're still going to love them. Now, they might irritate the fuck out of you sometimes. You might be exhausted at times at the amount of like love that you have to give to them because they just need a little bit extra but we have to think of ourselves as the same way the multi-dimensions of ourselves and all of the aspects of self that we are um that we are working with here on earth we have to love them as if they are your children just like god loves us as if we are god's children right because we are god's children um, and I believe that once you open up yourself to love, that 144,000 um, that people keep talking about, you are chosen, you are chosen, and you are chosen. You're chosen because you chose, not because you're a part of the 144,000. I resonate with that, the people that talk about the 144,000. But it is, um, in fact, it's a frequency. It's the frequency of divine love, or some people call it the Christ frequency, right? Because we know that Christ is a title. Christ is a consciousness. Um, so 144,000, that divine love, that unconditional love, or in the Bible, they were saying agape love. And it's, it's interesting because I just started wishing people agape love, like at the end of messages and stuff. But um. I think it's just very important for us to show that agape love to ourselves and finding different ways of really being able to show it to ourselves in ways that are meaningful to us. Um, yeah, I feel like that was kind of blah -de blah but at the same time, I feel like it was very much a point. So now I want to just like give a couple of different examples of, of um, different meditations that I found just over the over the past like three months honestly um, besides scripting and journaling and um, you know doing closing your eyes and going into like the REM state of uh, or a deeper state of meditation um, also I said it was literally doing literally doing anything with a focus um, for a certain amount of time so it can be dancing like set a timer and play a song dance and then one thing that I would do is if the song is not 10 minutes or if I don't want to pick another song I might script about how I feel that's a meditation because that in itself is focused okay I'm gonna do this activity and then I'm gonna write about how I feel or if you don't want to write you can take a video about you know how that felt just do something to to keep a record or to just like transmute it right transmute just means to change to change what is it to place from one place to another that's what i think about when i think about transmutation to change it from one thing to this thing right so i'm gonna change all of these feelings from being all up in here like oh yes i got all this giddy energy up in here and now i'm going to write it so that it's on paper um boom if you want to if you really want to be spicy with it put light a candle and put the candle over your scripting i feel like that is that just takes your meditation like to another level um because now you have invited the divine into your space to come and let them know like yes i love this this is what i want more of this is i desire to be in this state more so they're like okay boom 
whatever you want. Ah, girl, you know I can't provide. Okay, but anyways, <laughs> another example would be, oh, this just came to me and I, I actually want to try this because I'm definitely one to just scarf something down when it tastes really, really good. But just slowing down when you're eating your food and just try to take like 10 minutes or, you know, extra time to eat your food. Um, really focus on like what are the different textures in the food. Is something melting in your mouth while something else you have to chew? Is um, something really, really hot while something else is really, really cold? Like, for example, sometimes you might put like ice cubes and hot coffee or hot tea. Um, just you know make it cold but it's still that contrast right is it something like sweet and spicy like a hot honey um, is it crispy is it how does it taste you know what I'm saying like how does it smell like what what are the sensations that you feel in your body when you smell this food um, where where do you feel it in your body do you feel a tingle in your left thigh or do you feel the tingle in your left pinky toe or do you feel just a warmth in your heart because this is something that you used to love to eat as a child? That's always a great thing. Um, meditating about, you know, just and that's self care too. Meditating on what you're eating. You might actually um, get some insights as to more things that you should tap into as far as eating or things that you should let go of as far as your eating. Um, that all comes with meditation, right? Something else. Um, is intentionally going and doing things that you used to do as a child um, or things that you never got a chance to do as a child. So if you were, um, you know, at home all the time and you weren't really allowed to go out and walk that far or you could only walk to the stop sign and back, you know, to the fire hydrant or, or back, you know, I know a lot of us that grew up in Detroit, we might have had those type of experiences. You could only go to the corner and back. You couldn't pass the corner. Like, don't don't stop, pass, go, none of that. Don't collect 200. You know what I'm saying? Like, go outside and walk past your corner. Walk for as long as you want to. Walk for 30 minutes. See how that feels. Walk for an hour. See how that feels. Just keep walking and see what you run into. See, actually explore your neighborhood, not in a car. Um, I really found the value of slowing down through um, walking and not only just walking, but like pacing, um, like pacing yourself so that you can stop and see, okay, like I'm glad that I stopped because I would have stepped on that snail or, ooh, what kind of mushroom is this? I never knew mushrooms grew over here. You'll be surprised. Um, you might even run into like a building that you never knew was around the corner and now you have a new place to shop for food or now you have a new place to get your nails done or now you have a, a new beauty supply store to go and get some lashes and it's a walking distance. You feel me? So. Um, meditation can bring about a lot of clarity as far as um, what is what are you surrounded by because a lot of times we don't take the time um, in our busy busy schedules to actually go different routes you know besides to work the store to do it but, but right but we don't really look in different areas and see what's around us um, okay so those are different like ways that you can practice meditation just some like i feel like kind of oddball ways that nobody really talks about um and then i wanted to give a couple of tips for just like boosting your um boosting mood boosting your energy uh boosting your like mental capacity to meditate because sometimes just the word meditate like can be a little bit of a trigger word because when you think about meditate you think about quiet and then when you think about quiet you think about scary stuff <laughs> right but it, like i said it doesn't have to be quiet you don't have to start off doing stuff quiet you can definitely start off um speaking you can speak you can you know like play music and dance it doesn't have to be quiet um but it is a way to learn how to manage your thoughts so that when you get to feeling comfortable enough to be sitting in silence or be sitting in the dark and and in silence and quiet you don't feel like what the fuck i'm being bombarded and i'm being attacked <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah um something else that i wanted to mention is doing 
like childlike things and I kind of already got into this with the doing things that you weren't you know really able to do as a child but really just like tapping into that inner child and I feel like as long as Venus retrograde is here and on our patootie tooties that is just a, it's a great idea and it's going to be very healing um venus is going to be retrograde in leo until september the 4th and today is august the 11th um it's a friday friday <laughs> venus day look at that now we talking about the venus retrograde on venus day but okay anyways not not the serious alignment coming through but um yeah so if you if, if you want to i would encourage you to tap into a lot of different like things that you used to watch as a child those are usually um like shorter shows i noticed that like the shows that we watched as a kid because the commer because we had commercials and the commercials were like they weren't negotiable you know like with all the streaming and stuff we have now we could like skip through commercials or pay for premium like no you couldn't pay for no premium cable back in the day and skip the commercial baby you were gonna get all of the ads all of the everything that came with it but um now on youtube we have a whole bunch of shows uh, uh just a whole bunch of shows and even on like disney plus like granted you won't get the commercials and stuff and you won't get it on youtube either so it's actually a little bit better but it's a great way to um to just tap into the things that used to really bring you joy as a child and then one thing that i noticed is watching these shows and these movies as an adult i was not getting the le the lessons was not hitting like the messages the mantras the models that were in these shows they just weren't hitting like how they do right now it's something super um synchronic synchronistic about the way that the divine works you know like when you choose to go and watch a, a certain tv show or a certain movie um it'll be exactly what you need to hear during that time um it's like perfectly made for you um so it's almost like your child spirit just already knew what it was drawn to even though it wasn't able to you know decisively pick up all of those messages and be as deep and you know like but it's still new you know like the inner child is still here as well so when it's leading you to a certain show like for example one thing that i um tapped into that i haven't tapped into for a long time was brandy and mr whiskers that was like a buried memory and it took me like three different three different shows to even remember that when it just kind of showed up as a suggestion but when I went back and watched it I said oh my goodness I didn't even remember I didn't remember it like that too much but um the message was hitting the message was hitting um so yeah just tapping into um even like going outside and walking to the park and going swinging or you don't have to walk but going to the park and swinging on the swings you know what i'm saying like go down the slide <laughs> go early in the morning before the kids come and like get on the swings get you some air like i feel like that is that builds adrenaline like you know the slide is one thing the swings though like actually being up in the air like and thrusting through it's i feel like in a way it's working with the spirit of air because you are off your feet and you are really kind of like not fully in control of what's going on you just have to hold on to the to them little to the little chains and trust that you're not gonna fly off even though your brain knows that you're not gonna fly off because it just knows but it's it's just a thing guys look i'm just telling you tap into that inner child whatever your inner child is telling you to do um drawing or coloring i would recommend um setting a timer when you are doing your conscious meditations i would recommend just setting a 10 minute timer whatever you choose to do set a 10 minute timer and only do it for 10 minutes don't go past the 10 minutes i mean you can if you want to but 10 minutes is what's required right because sometimes when we get excited and we start being like i'm gonna do 20 and then, you know, like over time, you're going to get burnt out because 
you just like you have to it has to be some structure you know what i'm saying and then you don't want to prepare pro pro propel yourself farther than you're ready to like you know what i'm saying like you don't jump into 12 feet on day one you start in three feet that's just that's just the proper order of things so um start with 10 minutes whatever you choose to do coloring drawing watching a tv show um if you watch a tv show obviously you can go over the 10 minutes but just consciously knowing that okay my meditation is to watch this tv show for 10 minutes you know what i'm saying like or one or you can just do things that you know you can do in 10 minutes just like you know not to say like it's not military camp but it's it's a good boundary so that you don't get burnt out you know what i'm saying like if every meditation that you do feels like it has to be 30 minutes and you're trying to do so many things like just don't burn out that's it that's all that's it that's all don't burn yourself out because that's not necessary this is about recharging your energy right um being able to naturally um boost your dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and all of those really good hormones that our brain makes right just helping your brain to um to stimulate those feelings so that we can um make them ourselves and not always be dependent on other people or other or events which are led by other people or you know things other things like a tv show or to create it for us um if you are a singer write music for 10 minutes like go through beats like that can be a part of the meditation like looking for beats okay now i found one that i really really like this look that's confirmation now i found one that i really really like it took four minutes for me to find this beat okay now i'm gonna listen to it all the way through that might be another two minutes okay that's already six minutes okay yep i did that math right now all right y'all we had to temporarily disconnect because the phone got too hot but that's okay because we know how this technology does um i was talking about um writing music for 10 minutes right so you scroll 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 for a beat for about four minutes then for two minutes okay i'm gonna listen to the beat so for the last four minutes i'm gonna dedicate myself to just really getting some lyrics down even if that's one line even if it's one line it's okay it's very important for you to um just practice loving yourself through every part of the meditation um it's just very important like it's so important um whether you can whether the lyrics are dark whether the lyrics are very bright whether the lyrics seem a little bleak or you know like not your best it's the it's the fact that you were able to sit down and commit yourself to this specific meditation um for this certain amount of time right 10 minutes and then on top of that not only did you choose to intentionally do that but you chose to do something that caters to you right because the home doesn't always resonate for everybody and especially not all the time i had to learn that you can't just you you know like you have to vary your ways of um of meditation i'm gonna take these out because i don't like how they feel in my ears i just i can't <laughs> um yeah so just being being honest about how you feel if you're not feeling like you want to go into a meditation with your eyes closed you don't have to like you really don't have to do that um you can do things that keep you awake all day um another thing um that just came to my head if there were any activities that you weren't able to do as a child um like say if you always wanted to um learn how to swim okay so for 10 minutes you can look up you can either look up like videos of how to swim on youtube or you can actually go and search up different places where you can go and get swim lessons um even if it's just for you know a week or a couple days see if any local places are offering um you know like some day passes to get swim lessons just so that you can get the basics down and just fulfill that inner child wish of always wanting to learn how to swim or if it's something like kind of more out there like learning how to 
um, ride horses or something like all of these things are are offered if you want to learn how to do karate like when I was growing up karate kid was a really big thing with Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan before that there was a, a even older series of the karate kid with another actor and I think Jackie Chan was still a part of it but I'm not sure don't quote me on it because that was not my generation <laughs> but you know, like you can find karate lessons on YouTube and you can find 10 minute videos or 11 minute videos and just dedicate yourself to being in that zone of, yeah, I'm about to really tap in and be as, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like really tap in with the things that resonate with you. Like it's very important. Um, or even sitting down for 10 minutes and just scripting things that you really like to do. That can be difficult. But even if you don't get but three things on that page, well, now you have three different options of things that you can look forward to the next time you do your meditation. You can watch videos on YouTube. You can visualize yourself actually doing this. You can go on the internet and actually find places where you can go out and actually perform these tasks. Listen, once you really tap into what you like, I promise you meditation is going to become so much easier because all meditation is is getting to know yourself more deeply it's exploring the different dimensions of you um the dimensions that you never got a chance to um really explore fully or the dimensions that you were always like kind of scared of you know what i'm saying so yes i'm not gonna make this super long um but yeah, guys, I just really want to just put a different spin on um, on how we look at meditation and even how we, you know, judge ourselves through these meditations, thinking that, you know, everything that you see, everything that you hear is you when in fact, that's not true. It's not you. A lot of the things that you are seeing and hearing are not you. They were given to you or being given to you and they are being presented to you so that now you can choose to deal with them in whichever way you want to. Um, and I just want to give a little bit of a piece of advice when you are seeing, um, if you are in a more like relaxed, um, you know, closed eyes, still quiet type of meditation and those darker images um, or those darker memories, um, darker visions do come into play. Um, it can be really like taunting. Um, you know, and it can be very tempting to want to open your eyes, but once you get so deep into it, you, you will notice that even if you open your eyes, the images will not go away. Like they're going to stay because now you have the memory of what you just saw. So, um, the, the only thing that you can do that is going to conquer these things is to give them unconditional love. Whatever you are seeing, give it unconditional love. Give it unconditional love. Give it unconditional love in whatever way that might be. Whether that is giving the thing or giving the vision, whatever you have. So let me just, let me um make it, let me put it into context. If you are seeing like just warfare and like explosions, disaster, like everywhere you step, you almost step on a explosion or you almost step on some dynamite. Everywhere you about to, ooh, you about to step and then you move your foot, boom, it's a blow up right in front of your face. But for whatever reason, it don't take your face off. That's because one, you're protected. So number one, know that every time you go into your meditation, um, you are protected. You are divinely protected. You were protected before the meditation. You're going to be protected during the meditation and you're going to be protected after also know that everything that you are observing you are simply observing you are simply observing you are simply observing you are simply the observer of all of these things you are not in it currently you are simply observing these images these thoughts these scenarios you are the observer i want to keep stressing that you are just the observer you are not 
actually in these things. You are not these things, but you are the observer of these things. So as the observer, right, if you take yourself and take yourself out of it, right, mentally, and once you become the third party, it can be easier for you to find a solution, um, a loving solution, because now you are outside of it. We always say it's, that's easy. It's easier from the outside looking in. But then wait till you really hear. Okay, well, once you get here, you're still in the outside looking in in a way because you know that you are just the observer of these thoughts. So when these things come up, you can find creative, find different creative solutions to aid the problem, right? So if everywhere you step, you are seeing an explosion, right? The first thing that came to my head was to stand still and to literally just hug myself. And I pray. So I would start praying in the meditation, in my head. I would start praying. If I'm conscious enough to choose, and you will be, sometimes you'll be conscious enough to choose how you are going to react to these things that you are observing. Um, you can choose what to do. I would stand still. If I know that everywhere that I'm almost stepping, there's an explosion, I'm going to stand still. I'm going to hug myself and I'm going to pray. Period. And what you'll notice is, what your decision is going to either work or it's going to like change the scenario that you're seeing. So, and even if it works, it's going to change it. If it, even if it doesn't like, like bring you to a whole new scene, it's still going to change it. So what I'm saying is <laughs> it's, it's a little bit tricky to talk about these things because it is so out of like, it's so out of what we experience on a day-to-day, -day, like, you know, with the matrix, with the work, and with the blah, 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 blah and the bloody blah of life. It's like the bloody blah of life is completely different from the mental world, and I think that's why we try so hard with materialistic things and, you know, different events and different this and that and blah, 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 blah to shut out the mental, but you just simply cannot. And I think that you begin to find the most peace once you start to explore your mental um, and, and find all of these different creative solutions to stop the tricks that your mind is playing on you. Um, it's interesting. I ran into that song today. My mind's playing tricks on me. At the end of it, he was talking about how um, he was talking about how he finally like he kept like he kept thinking that that somebody was like after him. Right. So then he talked about how he finally ran into the the figure, the man that was after him, that tall six, seven foot figure that was after him. He said it was tall and it was dark, like shadowy, right? And then he said, so he got the beat in his ass, basically. And the song, he said he got the beat in his ass. And then he came back into his consciousness and saw himself with bloody hands and saw that he was punching the concrete. Then he said, damn, my mind playing tricks on me. I said, oh, this nigga is a prophet. <laughs> oh, I said, oh, this nigga is a prophet. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> but that's literally what it is. Ken on the clock. That's literally what it is. You have to understand that your mind is just a part of you. Um, when I first started my, like, my journey into spirituality i don't want to say my spiritual journey but like my journey into spirituality outside of christianity um i first was very 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 intrigued with hinduism um and sad guru was who i was watching on youtube and he had this meditation where he used to say i am not the body i am not even the mind um I am not the body. I am not even the mind. So once you understand that I am not this body, I am not even this mind, right? I am the spirit within. It makes a lot more sense how and why we are not the thoughts, right? The mind has thoughts, but if I'm not the mind, then I can't be the thoughts that the mind has. I can be some of the thoughts or I can cause some of the thoughts, but I am not the thoughts. Um, you are the creator. You are the, the one who is able to transform um, and transpire um, into so much, so many greater things out of the mind, right? 
I feel like that was legendary. Like, I gotta get myself some snacks. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. Like, just taking taking the time to really appreciate yourself um, for every little thing, um, every battle, even the ability to, even if you weren't able to necessarily, like, you know, completely change a dark scenario or completely, you know, like, as much as your expectations would allow you to hope that you would be able to, right? And that happens a lot. Um, it's important to know that even sitting through it is an accomplishment because I'm pretty sure that there were times in your life where you were not even willing to sit in silence or sit in quiet without texting somebody or calling somebody or looking for something to watch or looking for something to do, um, looking for something to distract yourself with or looking for, you know, something to eat. Like, come on now we really talking about it um so even the ability to sit and observe um is very much an accomplishment so i just want to give you guys some credit um and to let you guys know to give yourself some grace and keep loving on yourself um keep loving yourself extra hard extra extra excuse me extra 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 hard extra 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 hard what time is it because that that little burp came in like what yes and don't fear it's a, it's um 4 21 so seven on the clock don't fear um your mind because there's nothing to fear you're always protected um and there is nothing that your mind is going to give you or show you that you are not capable of handling um so the first thing that you should probably go about handling if that is one of your fears, the first thing that you should tackle is the thoughts that are telling you that you are not capable because you are absolutely more than capable. You're more than capable of doing this. And you have always been. You've always been capable. You're more than capable now, which is why it's coming up again and again and again. And it's going to keep coming up to let you know. You ready yet? Oh, okay. Okay, what about now? Okay, okay, no, 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 you're not ready to hear it. Okay, well, bye now. <laughs> until you are with until you are mentally able to say, okay, I don't have nothing to fear. Until you're able to trust yourself. Um and definitely always pray. If you pray or whoever um whoever you you pray to or whoever um is on your spirit team that you really trust if you have a guardian angel or archangel or um a, a specific ancestor that you go to definitely call them into your meditation to protect you lead you and guide you so that um your meditation is structured according to what it is that you need to see so that a lot of um the energies and the thoughts that infiltrate um your mind during your meditation don't overtake your ability to see through the message even though they won't because if you are actively um actively scripting and working on breaking down your meditations and breaking down your visions and, and your um your thoughts and your perceptions then it'll come it'll definitely come so yes guys i just wanted to give you guys some encouragement today and a little bit of advice if needed i miss you guys i missed you guys on my hiatus but it was very much necessary also on tiktok i don't know if you guys some of you guys follow me on tiktok but we were definitely talking about how our divine masculine needed a break and i was definitely a part of that collective because i think that was the last day <laughs> that i was showing my face in the public lord um but i'm back and i'm better i want you back as ever y'all know how this go all right make sure you like and subscribe like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel share the page share the video y'all already know how this goes i love you guys so so much to infinity and beyond and more than everything make sure you stay legendary and i'll catch you in the next video peace